Hello everybody and welcome to part two of building and detailing the Ravel Monogram 148 scale B26 Marauder. In part two we'll focus on the engine cowlings, the engines, the landing gear, and the fuselage interior. So let's get started. Loon Models makes replacement cowlings for this kit. However, they need to be tweaked for a good fit and the engines are better than the Ravel parts. Quick Boost also makes engines which can be made to fit into the Loon Models cowlings by just tracing the outline of the Loon Models backing onto the Quick Boost engine backing and then form fitting the engine into the cowling. I decided to use the Ravel cowlings for my build and the first step is to fill in the openings where the engine air scoops will be with strips of plastic. The center filler piece needs to be bent inward just a little bit to get it to fit correctly. And you also need to contour it around the inside edge. Microfiles were used to carefully and slowly trim down the plastic filler strips that were added so that the air scoop parts will sit correctly. Small sanding sticks were also used to help shape the added plastic. The air scoop parts were glued into place and the voids were filled with plastic strips super glued into place. To ensure that the noticeable step around the front of the cowling is maintained, use two separate lengths of plastic strips to fill the void area. To add strength to the cowling assembly, insert small strips of plastic into the voids on the back sides. On this cowling assembly, there were tiny voids in the front that were filled with 0 0.01 by 0 0.02 inch plastic strips. This cowling was checked with silver paint, which is great for detecting flaws, and none were found, so this cowling is now ready to be polished. The second cowling was shaped slightly differently, with a wider void between the air scoop parts, and consequently it needed thicker strips of plastic. The voids on the inside areas of the second cowling were also deeper and required wider lengths of plastic. Tiny lengths were added to the left and right side to completely fill the voids. This plastic was then carefully and slowly shaped and sanded down using small sanding sticks. The second cowling required more plastic strip fillers to get it to look good. Each cowling had some final shaping needed using small sanding sticks. On the second cowling, it took several iterations of silver paint and drops of superglue to finally get all the tiny voids filled. The engine cowling openings were reshaped using a 3 quarter inch wood dowel with 320 grit sandpaper wrapped around it. The poor plugs on the quick boost regin engines were wet sanded off. To prevent interference between these parts and the engine nacelles, also remove some of the backing. Each quick boost engine has three small parts to install. Since there are no positioning pins on these small parts, use slow set super glue to attach them. This will allow you some working time for proper positioning. The propeller shafts were glued to the propellers and then cut off at the base of each propeller. New propeller shafts were made using 0 .060 inch rod. This required enlarging the holes in the engines. The propellers were drilled out slightly larger than 0 .060 inches, so they had some play in them for proper positioning. The engines were fit checked inside the cowlings and then taped to the nacelles to be sure there were no fit issues. With the propellers in place, the engines will add a greatly increased level of detail to the overall appearance of the model. The fuselage halves have some alignment issues that need to be corrected, starting with the upper turret opening. To correct this problem, use a 3 quarter inch wood dowel with sandpaper wrapped around it. The gluing surfaces of the fuselage halves have tiny raised areas which will need to be removed to get a tighter fit. The forward landing gear bay also has a slight misalignment that needs to be fixed. Careful sanding, cutting, and shaping will fix this issue. There is also a tiny alignment issue where the canopy is located. 
The opening for the tail guns needs to be slightly reshaped. Here again, use a wood dowel with a length of sandpaper wrapped around it to reshape the opening. The fuselage halves are going to require a lot of sanding, which will destroy much of the surface detail, so the panel lines were sanded off. This mystery hole on the right side of the fuselage has no clear part, so it was filled and sanded smooth. The aft gun hatches do not fit very well. The tiny voids around the perimeter will be filled with white glue once the surface has been primed. The aft clear part also does not fit well. To get a better fit, angle the two sides noted by the arrow. The clear nose part fit fairly well after the opening was lightly sanded smooth. The fuselage misalignment in the canopy area has been corrected, but now there's a noticeable gap at the top of the canopy. This gap can be fixed with strips of plastic glued to the top side of the fuselage. Each fuselage half had a length of 0 0.015 inch thick plastic strip super glued into place, trimmed and sanded smooth. The canopy was form fitted into place by slowly sanding down the added plastic and checking frequently to make sure there was a tight fit. While the top of the canopy fits better on the top side of the fuselage, the sides will still need some white glue to close the tiny gaps. The clear parts for these openings are round, but the openings in the fuselage are not. Reshaping them was accomplished with a sanding rod. The small window openings on the front area of the fuselage also needed some slight reshaping so the clear parts would fit better. B-26 Marauders had hatch openings on both sides of the top part of the fuselage, which connected both the canopy and a section of the fuselage itself. The hatch outlines were drawn with a sharp pencil. Labeling tape was carefully positioned on the pencil lines and the plastic was scribed with a needle scriber. The plastic did not respond well to either a needle scriber or a panel line scraber because the plastic was somewhat soft. The Edward forward landing gear bay details were fit checked before gluing them into place. The photo wet sides were reinforced and additional lengths of plastic added to fill in any gaps. The forward landing gear doors had mold punch outs that could not be sanded out. They were hidden with lengths of 0 .010 inch thick plastic strips form fitted into place and cut with a Northwest short line chopper. There were also mold punch outs on the main landing gear doors. Most of these were sanded out with sandpaper wrapped around a length of balsa wood. The Edward forward landing gear Scissor supports were glued onto the plastic ones. Tiny lengths of 0 .020 inch rod were glued to the ends to cover the gaps. Removing the plastic scissors would have weakened the landing gear. The positioning tabs for the wheels were removed to get a tighter fit. A tiny bead of super glue was applied along the seam lines and then each wheel was carefully scraped and sanded smooth. The rivet detail on the main landing gear doors was redrawn and a plastic strip was then used as a guide for the pin vise to make slight indentations into the plastic. The fit of the main wheels to the landing gears was loose, so tiny lengths of plastic were glued to the axles to get a tighter fit. The main landing gear braces only needed to have the mold line scraped off. The base of the forward landing gear needed a little bit of scraping to get it to fit snugly into its positioning hole. The main landing gear were once again test fitted to be sure they could be inserted into the landing gear base without damaging them. The landing gear doors will need some minor tweaking to get them to fit correctly. The Bombay doors were cut out instead of folding them. The Edward photo wedge details were added to the lower doors while the upper door had small sections of 0 0.025 inch evergreen V groove sheet laminated to them. The doors were then carefully superglued back together.
white glue will be added to the void between the doors after they're primed. The Edward detail parts for the forward Bombay bulkhead were attached with tiny drops of slow setting super glue so that they could be positioned properly. The F Bombay bulkhead only had two photo etch parts to be added. The bomb have locating pins were removed for a better fit, and a bead of super glue was then applied around the perimeter of each bomb. The bomb seam lines were carefully scraped, wet sanded smooth with a flexophile, and then polished with a fine steel wool pad. The back sides of the bomb racks had deep dimples. They were covered with 0.015 inch thick strips of plastic. This large injection mark at the top of the cockpit bulkhead was removed with a length of sandpaper wrapped around a length of balsa wood. The mold line on the seat belts was carefully scraped off with the tip of a number 11 X-Acto blade. The seat cushions were then sanded smooth with a small sanding stick. The back side of the pilot seat had deep mold punch outs. They were filled with round stock, super glued into place, and then sanded smooth. The Edward forward cockpit bulkhead was laminated to a 0.015 inch thick strip plastic sheet to make it stronger. All the instrument and engine control detail was carefully scraped off and the surfaces sanded smooth in preparation for the Edward pre-painted parts. The Edward pre-painted engine control parts were carefully bent into shape with various diameters of drill bits. The console and the control column were taped onto the cockpit floor and then glued together so they would be positioned correctly. The console assembly was removed and the Edward photo etch side parts were super glued into place. It's easier to attach multi-level pre-painted photo etch parts while the bottom parts are still attached to their trees. These Edward cockpit photo etch parts have been carefully folded and they are now ready for priming and painting. The mold punch outs on the inside areas of the cockpit walls were removed by wet sanding them off with a length of sandpaper wrapped around balsa wood. The Edward side photo etch parts created a void line on both sides of the console. The top was covered with a 0.015 inch thick strip form fitted into place to hide the tiny voids. The Edward photo etch forward bulkhead needed some minor tweaking to get it to fit into place correctly. The positioning tabs were removed from the forward bulkhead and it was then glued to the floor with tiny drops of super glue while the cockpit floor was taped to the inside of the fuselage. Reinforcing strips were then added to the backside. The Edward cockpit photo etch detail parts were added to the right side of the fuselage. Be sure the larger part is positioned high enough so that it will not interfere with the side of the cockpit floor. Note the markings on the left cockpit wall to help position these photo etch parts correctly. To increase the gluing surface area of the overhead cockpit console, small strips of plastic were form fitted and glued into place. The angle on the smaller piece prevents interference with the downward angle of the canopy. This concludes Part 2 of Building and Detailing the Ravel Monogram 148 Scale B26 Marauder. And Part 3 will focus on the machine guns and then we'll start airbrushing all of the tiny parts. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so, and pay us a visit at www.mikeashy.com, where you'll find dozens of free PDF downloads, including an extensive PDF download on building this kit, which was designed to complement our YouTube series. Have a great evening.